How would you feel if you lost over 75% of your money in the stock market? What's up guys? Welcome to the Wall Street Money Report where we discuss markets, money, and all the things that are related to both of these topics. Normally what I do in these videos is I do market recap videos where I talk about the market, I share with you my take on where I see the market going, what sectors are being bought up, what sectors are, what stocks are moving. And really what I try to do is boil down the market movement to what's being bought and what's being sold. But today I wanna to pause from the usual market talk and I wanna pause because there's something I think that is just as important to talk about that we all need to understand if we're gonna do well in the market. And that's the buy and hold investing strategy. Now, if you're a buy and holder, you might be a little bit triggered by this video. I'm not here to shame or to uh, put anyone down, but I do want to talk about this because it's very important. I want to give you another take on that, okay? Uh, so even if, um, even if you're a strong buy and holder, I suggest you still watch the whole video to the end and just kind of think about it, okay? The goal in, in all of this is just to give us more education to help us to be better investors, okay? So I want you to think about bear markets. All right. Now, bear markets are a normal occurrence in the stock market. At some point in time, we're going to experience them. Okay, we've, we've already experienced uh, somewhat of a bear market recently. Now, what's really dangerous about these bear markets is that few people are actually prepared for them. Sadly, even financial advisors don't prepare for them. And when they do happen, their clients usually pay a very high price. Now, the reality is that we live in a world where everyone believes that if you buy and hold, you're going to do well over the long term. Now, guys, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but for many years, I was in the financial industry. And for a few of those years, I was a financial advisor. So I know what goes on in the business. I know the strategies that most investors recommend to 99% of investors. I know the charts that they use. I know the reason, the reasoning and the rationale behind their logic. But I also know something else. My clients didn't lose any money when the market crashed while the majority of their friends did. And why was that? Why did my clients not lose money but their friends and their family members who also had financial advisors, why did they lose money? The biggest reason for this is because I never believed in the buy and hold mentality. We didn't practice buying and holding blindly. I had an agreement with my clients that whenever I would manage their money, my job was first and foremost to protect their capital. So instead of buying and holding, we practiced buying and holding and selling. See, most people forget about that third one, the selling part. That doesn't exist for a lot of people and for a lot of financial advisors. And that's what gets them in trouble. Because when the market tanks, like it did back in the dot-com crash, back in the Bear Stearns crash, back during the pandemic, when those crashes happen, we sell. Now that doesn't mean we're not gonna take a loss. Sometimes that's gonna happen, but I'd rather sell and lose a small fraction of my capital than lose over 10% of my money. The reality is that most millionaires lose money in bear markets, and that happens more than most people want to admit. Let me tell you guys a little bit, a little story about a man who had $3 million in the market, okay, that he, that he basically had from retirement. He built up his capital to $3 million. He had $3 million, but after the market crash in 2002, he was down to $650,000. He lost over 78% of his money in one single bear market. Had this individual been my client back when I was in the financial industry, this would have not have happened. Okay? This is because when you see your account go from 3 million to 2.5 million to 2 million, you have to open your eyes to the direction that the money is flowing. We can all see it. We can definitely feel the stress of it. Some of us don't want to even look at our accounts after a while just because we don't want to know what's going on. It's easier to stick our head in the sand and just check out until the crash is over. And then we log into the account, 
we connect with our advisor and then we see what happened. It's like leaving your house when a hurricane strikes. Okay, you just leave everything and you return when the hurricane is over, you survey the damage and that's when you take inventory. But you can't do that with your portfolio. Now this crash that affected this guy was back in 2002. But this is still happening to people even today. There are people right now who are in the same boat because they invested all their money into the art funds or they refused to get out um, or they bought Tesla when it was hitting the highs and they held it all. They, they held the ride all the way down to the 150s. Now, why do we do these things? The answer is psychology. See, most people see when the stock you know what what they see the stock going down from 10 to 15 percent and they say when it goes down to 15 percent i'm getting out but when that happens when it actually does go down to 15 percent most people reason with themselves that if they sell now they're for sure taking a loss but maybe just just maybe if they hold a little bit longer it'll come back and they won't have to lose so much money Maybe they'll lose 10% instead of 15 or maybe 5% instead of 15%. This reasoning starts to happen in, in, in ourselves when the stock goes down and actually hits these levels. So eventually we reason with ourselves that since we're down 15% or more, well, we might as well just hold a little bit longer and give it a little bit more time. Some of them probably, uh, especially if they have financial advisors, will often not only fail to sell, but they'll buy more stock because they're convinced they're not they're not actually down 15 percent, but rather they're able to get the stock 15 percent cheaper than what it was before. So they turn this loss into a positive thing and they'll actually buy more as the stock is going down. Now, this strategy works until the day it doesn't. And when it doesn't work, let me tell you what happens, okay? Well, now that you're down 15%, you're going to give the stock more time and you're not going to sell it, but then the next day, it's down even more. And by the end of the week, you're down 18%. By the end of the month, you're down another 5%. And now you're down over 20%. You know, your 20% of your investment is gone. Well, what do you do now? The plan to hold on to the stock turned out to be a bad idea. And if you bought more stock at 15%, you're down even, even more now because the stock that you bought at 15% is down to 20%. So now you're down an additional 5% of fresh capital that you actually just put in when it was down at 15%. Well, you would think that at this point, the bell should be going off in our minds, alerting us to the fact that the ship is sinking. Well, we again reason with ourselves. Some may decide that, look, I'm not going to buy more stock, but they're going to draw a line in the sand and they're going to say, if I'm down 30 percent, then for sure I'm getting out, but I'll, I'll give it another 10 percent. So after a, a little bit of convincing, again, of, of more reasoning, they decide to once again hold. They reason that the, the buy and hold strategy, it's, it's a long-term strategy. It's gonna get them out of this mess if they just stick to it. That's what's been taught to them by the financial professionals. That's what their friends have done. And that's what they've heard that people who make money in the market and retire successfully, that's what they're doing. This is what's been told. So they say, I'm not gonna get emotional. I'm going to be a mature adult about this. I'm going to listen to the sound advice of the professionals and I'm going to hold because after all, the market always comes back, right? So I'll just stop looking at the account and I'm going to focus on my work or whatever it is that I'm doing. And so now we do the same thing that we did when the stock was down 15%. But again, the market continues moving lower and lower and now we're down over 35 percent maybe 40 percent so at this point we've lost almost half of our money we're, we've gone from being hopeful to now feeling defeated depressed stressed out and this is usually around the time when most people finally admit that that they were wrong except they don't sell 
they pretty much say, well, the worst happened. I lost almost half of my money. So I'm just going to sit tight and I'm going to wait until it comes back, even if it takes years. And again, they, and again, they convince themselves that the buy and hold strategy is what is going to come and save them. Well, let's fast forward and continue the story about the investor I was telling you about in the beginning of the story. Eventually, this man ends up selling, but not until he finally lost nearly all of his money. He decides that it's better to get $650,000 out than to see even that bit, of, that bit of money fade away. It's better to get something than risk losing it all, risk losing all that, all that money. And usually this is when the, the market finally bottoms and it starts moving up. So the question is, should he have waited a little longer? Should he maybe have bought more and more on the way down? Or should he have sold back when he was down only 15%? In which case, he would still have a little over $2.5 million in his portfolio versus 650000 now, the answer to that question depends on who you ask and who you have managing your money. For most people, the most common answer is to buy and hold. So for those people who are in this camp, they would have been down 78% and would probably have to wait a good amount of years before any of that money ever came back. And that's assuming that the stock actually, that the stocks actually indeed come back. Many people forget that in bear markets, a good number of companies go out of business and they get delisted out of the market. There are people who invested a large part of their money in Blockbuster and they never got the chance to get, <laughs> to get out of the market. They bought and hold, but the problem was that stock, the company went bankrupt and it stopped trading. A lot of people think that this only happens to penny stocks, to small companies or startups, but the reality is, is that this happens to large companies too. And in bear markets, some of the most favorite stocks end up going out of business and getting delisted. Now I know what some of you out there might be saying, uh, he's, he's just exaggerating. This, this really doesn't happen to most people. Well, the reality is that it happens frequently. What are the chances? that a bear market is going to happen during our lifetime, during your lifetime. It's very high, okay? It's, in our lifetime, we'll see a few bear markets. Netflix fell over 75% in one year during the recent pandemic crash. Tesla fell over 70%. Roku, 90%. Carvana, very popular stock, 98%. It fell 98% from those highs. Some of the stronger names didn't do as bad, but they still fell a good 20 or 30%. You have Apple, Apple and Microsoft, okay? Facebook, on the other hand, dropped 70%. Most investors, more, more than likely, they had some of these names in their portfolio and they suffered losses. So if you bought and hold, then you're down. And some more worse than others, but it wouldn't be out of the ordinary to find another person out there who like this guy who lost three million, pretty much ran into the same situation, they lost a good amount of their money, and now they have to wait for years hoping that it's gonna come back. This is the fruit of the buy and hold strategy. It's a scenario that can happen, and it often does happen, but we just don't hear these stories because they're not popular to report and they don't get people excited to put their money in the market. And the goal of the financial news is to get people excited so that they can invest their money. They don't want to discourage the general public from investing and contributing to a growing economy. Now, the point of this video isn't to change your style of investing or to convince you that your financial advisor is needs to be replaced, okay? This video again is not financial advice. This is just my thoughts as a successful uh, financial advisor, ex-financial advisor who used to be in the business, who saved his clients from suffering the fate of the buy and hold strategy. 
The point of this video is to give you the other side of the token, the other side of the scenario, the side that no one wants to look at. No one wants to plan on what happens if they lose money because it's, a, it's an uncomfortable topic. But the reality is that by failing to protect and preserve our portfolio from serious crashes, we open up ourselves to the possibility that we could lose most of our money. Now, unfortunately, this advice of buy and hold is not going to go away anytime soon. I'm sure some of you out there watching the video are completely disagreeing with me on this. And you're not alone. All right. Most most of the advisors in my office disagreed with me, but I saved my clients his money and, and, and my other clients their money as well because I went against the grain, because I didn't believe that you should just buy and hold blindly. You have to buy, hold, and sell. You have to manage your money. But you've heard this advice of buy and hold. Uh, ask, ask someone who's lost a lot of money in the market if they practice this advice, and the chances are that they did. This buy and hold strategy is popular advice. If you Google this or if you if you go to chat GBT and you ask about this, you'll probably be equipped with all sorts of information to convince you to buy and hold forever and to diversify to minimize your risk. I worked in this industry for years and I saw this advice practiced on investors for many years. Now, I'm not saying the industry is out to hurt. Uh, to hurt people or to intentionally harm and mislead or, or any of that. I'm not saying any of that. What I'm saying is that you're dealing with an industry that just doesn't believe anyone should ever sell a stock, period. And my opinion on that is that is if that is how you feel, then you need to understand the risk of that decision and what it means to you. Now, I want to add a few more videos on this subject because I don't think you can sum up the errors of the buy and hold method in one video, but I think it's a good video illustrating a real example of what can happen to people who practice this buy and hold method blindly. So if you found this video interesting and if you want to learn more about how to manage your money and do it successfully. I invite you to follow my channel. I'm a full-time investor who used to be a professional trader on Wall Street and I do these videos here to educate people on the markets. So again, if you like the video, then go ahead and subscribe and peace and love guys and I'll catch you, I'll talk to you on the next video. Take care.